I couldn't stop looking at him, at his smile, and his hair. I had never seen locks up close. His were thick and black and spiraling down over his shoulders. I wanted to touch them, to touch his face. I wanted to hear him say his name again. For a moment, we stared at each other, neither of us saying anything. There was something familiar about him, something I had seen before. I blinked, embarrassed suddenly, and turned away from him. Then Jeremiah rose, and I rose. Well, goodbye. I guess, I guess I'll see you around, he said softly, looking at me a moment longer before turning away and heading down the hall, his locks bouncing gently against his shoulders. Jeremiah, I whispered to myself as I walked away from him. I could feel his name settling around me as though I was walking in the midst of it, of him, of Jeremiah. Hi, this is Martha from Ruby Soup with Pearl Juice, and today I am bringing a review of if You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. Jacqueline Woodson is a author of several middle grade and young adult novels. And this one was published in 1998. She has won quite a few awards, as you can probably see on the cover. She has received the Newbery Honor um, three times. And she also this year won the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award, which is kind of like winning the Nobel Prize letter, um, the Nobel Prize for kids lit. The Nobel Prize for this year. Yeah, and she's the only one who's going to get a Nobel Prize this year. Um, I'll, I'll leave links below if you're wondering about that. <laughs> this is a first part in a duology, and it is kind of a star-crossed lovers story. It follows two young teenagers who are both 15 and they meet and fall in love. Ellie, who is white and Jewish, and Jeremiah, who is black. And Ellie is dealing with a home situation where her mother has twice before in her life abandoned the family and then returned. And she's dealing with the aftermaths of being abandoned and trying to see if she can grow to trust her mother again. And then we follow Jeremiah, whose parents have divorced, and he is adjusting to going to a very white dominant school, which he is not used to. And then these two meet in the hallway and they are instantly attracted to one another. And then the plot takes off from there. The book changes perspective. We follow Jeremiah, and we also follow Ellie. Jacqueline Woodson is a black American author, and I have to say that she writes both Jeremiah's and Ellie's perspective really, really well. Like that sense of wonder, but also kind of like uncertainty that comes with teen life. And the one thing that I really like about this book is that it talks about race relations and racism and intersectionality, which is very surprising considering that this book came out in the 90s. But it also talks about things like what it's like to be in the middle of a messy divorce and what it's like to be dealing with the fact that you don't completely know if your parent is always going to be there for you. And all of these themes just flow into each other with such ease and I flew through this book and I absolutely loved this. When we follow Jeremiah, Woodson talks a lot about what it's like to be black in America and the sense of always being hyper aware of it and constantly feeling like you're under a white gaze of sorts. She talked about it with such honesty and frankness and she didn't shy away from really uncomfortable situations. Jeremiah, even himself, doesn't always know how he should feel in certain situations. Once a rich white kid who is appropriating black American slang, he is really annoyed at this, but he doesn't really know how to 
respond to the situation. And there's like a lot of scenes like that throughout the book. The same way his father believed it every time he said, Maya, you're a black man. You are a warrior. But where was the fight? He used to wonder. Where was the war? Later on, when Jeremiah saw a cartoon about a monkey playing basketball, he felt ashamed, like that monkey was supposed to be him somehow. And he knew it then. The war was all around him. It was people and commercials trying to make him feel like he didn't even matter. Trying to make him feel like there was something wrong with being black. And then, like, if we get back to Ellie, one thing that I really liked about this book is that Ellie is Jewish, and it's sprinkled into the story, but it's, like, not a big deal. She has Ellie, who is white, who develops a crush on a fellow black student, and she is confronted with white privilege, and she even discovers that her family is not necessarily always that understanding. And one thing that really surprised me was that Ellie's uh, sister has dealt with homophobia, then she turns out to be racist. That was very interesting that Woodson was touching on that subject of how other marginalized groups don't necessarily always understand the struggles of other marginalized groups, or they don't always support other marginalized groups. He's taller than me, I said. He has locks and these bright brown eyes. Locks? His hair, you know. Ugh, that's kind of a bummer. Why? I don't like white guys with locks. I mean, it's obviously an appropriation. He's black, Anne. She didn't say anything. I could feel the air between us getting weird. Maybe a minute passed. Maybe two. Really? No, I said, growing annoyed. I'm lying. I sighed. Nothing, I gotta go. I have to study. Ellie, don't be like this. I'm just surprised, that's all. You were all excited before. Before I told you he was black. Well, I'm still excited. I can be surprised and excited at the same time. Jeez. I just never thought about it, you know. Well, maybe you should ask yourself why. It's not like you don't see black people every day. I just never thought about it for myself. Or maybe for anybody else in our family, really. That's all. I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think to have a boyfriend or girlfriend from a different race is really hard. I want to be the big sister thing and tell you to... I don't know. I don't want you to hurt, Ellie. That's all. I stared down at my cubicle. It was bleeding now. When I had chewed too deep. That's what Marion told you, Anne. I said softly. I know, and I can't believe it's coming out of my mouth now. I can't believe I'm sitting here understanding how Marion felt. That's not right. I felt old suddenly. What had I expected? That she'd cry with happiness? That she'd come right home to meet him? No, just that she'd, that she'd be there for this, the way she'd always been there. I gotta go, I said again. Listen, Ellie, I know you're pouting. Look, I know it's New York. I know things are different from when I was in high school and blah, blah, blah. But I have to be a big sister for a moment and say, don't do something just because you're mad at Marion or want to be radical. You're such a jerk, I said. When did you get to be such a jerk? I hung up before she could answer. One way how to grow as a person is that you start recognizing uh, certain injustices that you might not have been aware of because it hasn't affected you personally. And I really liked it how Ellie even admits that she's been very naive and very ignorant when she hasn't been aware of these issues before. I really liked it that she was like not gaslighting Jeremiah and she wasn't like telling him like oh no you're like overreacting like she was supporting him and she was saying that no these experiences are legitimate 
Uh, I think like that's such an important message to show in a book. Some people would critique this book for being kind of insta lovey, and I'm going to defend it a little bit. I feel like that's very true for that age. Um, they are like both 15. And I actually kind of thought that it was a very sweet but also sincere portrayal of that kind of naivety that you can have when you are young. Then the thing is that when they actually do get together, then they have very good chemistry and they are written like so believable that I actually thought that it ended up paying off. And I have to say, they were a super cute couple. I just really, really shipped them in this book. They were so kind towards each other and they were so understanding and it was so adorable. It was, it was very fluffy, but it was, it was very cute. Now I'm going to go into spoiler territory. So if you haven't read the book or if you want to read the book without being spoiled, then get out now because I am going to now talk about the ending. Okay. So I'm going to count to three and then you guys should either go or stay, up to you, but here it goes. One, two, three. When Jeremiah, at the end of the book, gets shot by that policeman, I almost cried. And I barely ever cry in books, and I didn't cry this time either. However, it was like really a close call, and I just was so upset that I had to put the book down and calm myself because the ending really much reminded me of a lot of the news uh, nowadays with um, Black Lives Matters and uh, police brutality that's going on in America. And I was thinking that what this book does so well is that we follow Jeremiah and we see him with his family and we see him with Ellie and we are in his head and we kind of like get to know him so well as a person, like his thoughts and his feelings, he, his hopes and his dreams, that it took this subject that's really important, which is um, racism and police brutality and the killing of unarmed black Americans in America. It was such an incredible thing to do in this book and also such a brave way how to end a book. I felt that I really got attached to Jeremiah. Then him dying like really was a a humongous blow by showing that beyond all the headlines and the statistics then the reason why we talk about these things and the reason why we say Black Lives Matter is because, you know... As priv you know, as privileged white people, we tend to forget that these are actual lives that are affected and actual lives, like actual people that lives have been cut too short. If it was up to me, this would be mandatory reading in every school right now. So that was my review of If You Come Softly. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, click the like button, subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.